Hey everyone, Kelly from Half Full. We're here today with a very special guest for Flaunt Your Brand Fridays. We are here with Eli Dunn, two-time Chopped Champion on the Food Network and owner and chef as well at Eli's Kitchen in Warren, Rhode Island. Welcome, Eli. Thank you, Kelly. It's an honor and a privilege to be here. So tell us a little bit about how you got into cooking. Sure. So uh, my mom owned a restaurant. I was literally born above a restaurant in Seekonk, Mass. And uh, my mom owned a small seafood restaurant for 30 years. So uh, I was born in an apartment above the restaurant with a midwife. And literally the first thing I learned how to cook was myself. I, um, so my mom was in the kitchen and our apartment was next door to the restaurant. So she was in the restaurant kitchen prepping and she heard this blood curdling scream coming from now, why I was unattended, I, I don't know. That's a different conversation, but Hopefully, yeah, <laughs> four, three years old. So she heard the scream. She ran in, and I had crawled up onto the stove on my hands and knees. I turned all the burners on, and I was walking across like coil electric stove on my hands and knees. So I like to joke around that the first thing I learned how to cook was myself. But yeah, so I, I grew up in a restaurant. That's the, <laughs> or on a stove. <laughs> I grew up on a stove. <laughs> oh my, well, that's that's an awesome fun story. Um, and from that grew the dream to open your own restaurant. So when did that happen? Sure. So um, I, to, to be honest, did not really want to be in the family business for until, until much later in, in my mid-20s. But I started washing dishes at 13 and I worked my way up. I worked every, every position in the restaurant, you know, front of the house, back of the house. As um, everyone on earth should, I have to say. Seriously. Yeah, definitely. Everyone should work in a restaurant. 100%. And always tip 20% or more. 40%. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so in my mid-20s, I kind of, once I got away from the restaurant and I started to travel, I traveled around the country a little bit, and I got to have some other food experiences outside of my mom's restaurant. And one of the things I think I think that I realized is, you know, um, I had this sort of innate ability to taste flavors and recognize flavors and dishes and sort of appreciate food on a level more than just sustenance. And, you know, I think I had my first real formative food experience out in California at a restaurant called Chez Panisse, which is a really famous restaurant that the owner, Alice Waters, was said to have invented California cuisine. Um, she was commissioned to do a organic vegetable garden at the, um, the White House when um, the Clintons were in, in, in the White House. So she's a, a food celebrity now, but her restaurant is this really incredible farm to table restaurant as she sort of pioneered the farm to table movement in California back in the 70s. And her food was elevated, but it reminded me of my mom's food. And I remember thinking as I was eating this incredible meal, like in my early 20s, that this was something that I think I could do, you know? The food tasted so familiar to me. And so I kind of came back and I had a different perspective after that experience. And I was still, I'd always worked in restaurants, you know, throughout my adolescence and early adulthood. And I kind of came back and in my mid 20s, I. I started getting, uh, you know, jobs where I was able to be a little more creative, um, and you know, either you know, chef jobs or sous chef jobs, and um, I really started to, I think, utilize a lot of the the skills and the tools that I learned watching my mom and growing up and eating together as a family. And she had a, a organic garden in the backyard that we would, you know, source some stuff from. But even just the experience of having a garden and going out there and the you know, smelling, smelling the, the fresh herbs and tasting the fresh herbs and being, you know, back there in that garden, you know, I think sort of gave me this appreciation for sourcing responsibly, cooking with love and sharing with others, you know, um, which is my food philosophy, you know, that I, I sort of later on realized, you know, this is, this is what I love about food, you know, and so my mom kind of gave me that platform. And then once I sort of went out into the world and started to experience people who cooked like my mom, I think I really realized this is what I want to do. And how would you describe the food that you, you make at Eli's Kitchen then? So uh, one Yelper said globally inspired comfort food. It's always been a tough question because we, my food philosophy is really, like I said, source responsibly cook with love, share with others, but sort of going deeper than that, it's about being of service to people. So um, I try not to bring my ego or my, what I think, how I think food should be into that equation. So. If I were cooking for you and you wanted me to cook you something that maybe wasn't something that I loved or maybe wasn't, you know, I thought, oh, this is beneath me or I'm a chef, like I don't want to make mac and cheese or whatever it is, like that, that doesn't matter to me. 
it would be like, all right, this is a challenge. Like Kelly really wants a delicious mac and cheese. How can I cook something that evokes nostalgia, that tastes delicious um, with, you know, responsibly sourced ingredients, you know? And so I really love the collaborative process of cooking for people, um, you know, or, or with people, I guess, in a way, you know, versus that, you know, it's the chef's, the chef's always right. It's my way or the highway. You know, I have this Michelin star, this James Beard award, and you should just eat what I want you to eat. It's more like, okay, how can I be of service to you? How can I cook for you um, and, and, and make you happy? So, I mean, that's really kind of my food philosophy, but at Eli's, you know, globally inspired comfort food pretty much encapsulates the cuisine that we serve here. You know, it's a little bit of everything. Um, there's a little bit of New Orleans influence because I love New Orleans. It's like, I lived there in a previous life, I believe. And then there's, you know, some, some Thai and some Indian. It's basically like a collection of all of my favorite foods. And we, you know, like the challenge of taking, we don't really want things to be too exotic. So things are um, accessible. So everyone's had like, I don't know, like an Indian curry, a tikka masala or something like that. So we had like a, a butternut squash tikka masala on the menu for a period of time, you know, or we have a carnitas taco or we make our own falafel and hummus in house, you know, so different things like that, that are, I think, entry level accessible um, ethnic cuisine, globally inspired cuisine. Um, Cause I don't want to alienate people. I really want the food to be accessible. I love that. And so many people, uh, chefs are not that way. Like you said, they're very, if you don't like it, tough. <laughs> and there's rules for that. I mean, there's, that, that's just not the way that I feel about food, but I, I don't want to sound as though I think I'm any better than anyone else. I mean, there's a place for the Mich a Michelin starred restaurant. There's a place for the James Beard Award winner, um, but that's just not the trajectory of my career. And I really, um, I don't know, I love when little, five-year-old kids come up to the past and they're like that was the best burger i've ever had you know like that's like better than any critics award you know it really is the kids are picky <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. yeah. how have you had to pivot other than the, the you know the obvious uh social distancing guidelines but how have you had to pivot your business uh, to make sure you're surviving the pandemic so um, we early on made the decision to rather than invest heavily in infrastructure to meet the changing landscape like invest in outdoor an outdoor dining area or invest in a ton of plexiglass all over the place like we we decided that we were essentially going to go as lean as possible um in the style of lean manufacturing and like really just i mean i was able to take care of my staff people collect unemployment i got federal funding like i was able to make sure because I, I had 24 staff when this hit and i have five now um you know, so I was able to take care of my staff first and foremost, but then we decided to really just dial everything back and sort of hibernate through the pandemic. So we've been doing primarily takeout four days a week, four to 8 p.m., um, one menu versus we used to do lunch, dinner, weekend brunch, you know. Now we're just doing one sort of dinner kind of type menu with a really limited menu that changes still seasonally and things like that. But um, so we've really just like I said, we're kind of just treading water right now. And my COVID pivot has been personally that I have, uh, early on in the pandemic, I started getting calls from people who were like, hey, I had a wedding planned for 200 people and now we're trying to plan a backyard under 20 person wedding, are you interested? And I used to say no to requests like that because I didn't have the bandwidth, but I had plenty of time because I was quarantining. And I said, sure, you know? And so I, I, I did a wedding in June and that turned into like a couple references for other small events. And all of a sudden I had this full fledged private chef micro catering side hustle going that really carried me through the winter. And it was great because, or through the summer rather, and it was great because, and into the fall, because it got some money in my pocket and um, also got some money back into the restaurant. Um, and it was sort of like a symbiotic thing where I'd go to these events and people would be like, oh, I, I got to try your restaurant out, you know? And it, so it was kind of cool. And um, to be honest, without that, uh, it would have been really a struggle because we really haven't been making money, like even close to where we're like 80% down from our revenue from last year this time. So, um, I mean, it's, it's really insane, the existential threat to the restaurant industry. But, um, but this has sort of saved me personally and gotten a little bit back into the restaurant. So... Now that's become a little bit more than a COVID side hustle. It's, it's uh, a full on, I'm booking out events, private chef events into next year under 
you know, whatever the guidelines are, if it's eight people or 10 people, I'll do it, you know, and I even have some virtual cooking classes that I've now lined up um, in going into next year, some master course, the six week cooking class that you can buy for $189. You can, um, and all this is on uh, www.chefelidunn.com. It's not the restaurant website, it's my chef website. You can go in and you can buy a six week pass and over the course of six weeks from January 7th through I think it's the second week of February, you learn how to cook some of our people's favorite Eli's kitchen dishes. So the sweet chili cauliflower, our brioche donuts, things like that. Um, and the classes are on Thursday night. They're anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours. I don't really want to put a time limit on it because I talk a lot, so I didn't know. But, um, and so that's kind of another way, another revenue stream for me. And really, ultimately, the way that I can still continue to interact with people. Takeout's weird. People come in, they have a mask on. We all have our masks on, you know, and it's like you can't really see. And they only come a couple feet into the restaurant. And it's like, here's your food. Now get out, you know. Throw it's just, it at them. <laughs> yeah, throw it at them. So this is a way that I can, I think, more comfortably and freely source responsibly, cook with love and share with others. So. Yeah, uh, it's it's insane, and I I feel for you. I have been in the restaurant business since I, I was like fourteen. Uh, I won't tell you how old I am now, but um, up until a couple of years ago, I was still bartending part time because it's fun, you know, and and just you get to interact with people. So that's what restaurants are all about: is getting together and having food and breaking bread, right? So I feel for you. I will absolutely come and check everything out. Um, we'll put the links uh, to your masterclass in the description. So you guys should check that out definitely. Um, but yet through all this, right, you still are giving back to the community. And that's our big thing here at Half Full. We are all about giving back. So let's talk about that for a minute and how you still continue to give back. You've been doing it since the pandemic began. Um, so just talk a little bit about that. I pat yourself on the back a little bit. Sure, I can do that. <laughs> So we, I, I've done a few things before and during the pandemic. Uh, you know, like I said, part of my food philosophy is being of service. And that's not just to people who are buying my food, but it's also the community around me. Um, and, you know, being a part of the community here in Warren is amazing because there are some people doing incredible work. Uh, most notably, I think Hope and Maine right down the road, which is a, a kitchen incubator, food incubator. Uh, establishment and you know they're literally taking it's a nonprofit and they're taking people in and you know with an idea and they're turning in, and then they're giving those people all the tools and the resources that they need to create eventually a brick-and-mortar business or a food truck or something like that you know and so I've partnered with them to do some cool things and most recently I've been doing a, a fundraiser for the Red Brick School in Barrington where which is what we're doing tomorrow night so and tickets are still available. It's a, uh, we're doing a globally inspired tapas for your next holiday party menu theme. So you can log in via Zoom and it, it's $50. You get a login, you get a shopping list um, with recipes. And there's still time to go out and get this stuff tomorrow before the class. Uh, and you log in and um, cook with me, alongside me, cooking things like the sweet chili cauliflower, like our homemade falafel, like uh, naan with mango chutney. So different globally inspired kind of appetizers, hot appetizers. Uh, and then 30% of the proceeds go back to the Red Brick School. So we did a successful one for Thanksgiving, like Thanksgiving Sides with a Twist was the name of the class. And, you know, we raised like $1,000 for the Red Brick School, which is not a ton of money, but it's something. Okay. You know? Something, right? So yeah. by the time this airs, it'll be past tomorrow. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so let's talk about the one you have coming up, though, in February. Gotcha. That, okay. that people can still get in on. Yeah, so uh, so we're gonna do so. We're, it, was, it was three three classes. So next one would be in February, uh, Valentine's Day, whatever that date is. I can't think. It's the fourteenth or the sixteenth. Fourteenth, <laughs> I think. February fourteenth, um, Valentine's Day, and so essentially, it's um, kind of the idea is it's like a couples cooking class, but it doesn't need to be couples. It really could be anybody, but it's uh, a romantic night at home theme essentially. And I'll be singing. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna sing. Um, it's, <laughs> it's gonna be, uh, you know, like a really nice meal. So I think, I think I'm doing a, um, like a creamy turnip soup with brown butter and hazelnuts. And then I think that there's going to be like a beef tenderloin 
and then um, like a flourless chocolate tort with raspberries and whipped cream or something like that, you know? Um, and so the idea is that couples or people, whoever wants to do it, um, can cook along with me instead of going out on Valentine's Day, which I, I'm pretty sure we're not going to be able to do that in February. I'm just going to look into the crystal ball and think we're not going out in February. So, um, so yeah, so it's $50. Um, you sign up uh, through, there's a, um, if you go on our social media account, uh, Eli's Kitchen social media account, there is a post with a QR code that you can scan and that'll get you and that and then you'll pay you know payment through into Venmo and then once I get the payment I send out a shopping list with recipes and suggested food sources as well as a, a registration link for Zoom. So that's awesome. I'm gonna have to get myself a date for Valentine's. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the only one just doing it by myself. I, I, I would love that. Um, but I like beef tenderloin so that works for me. And it goes to a good cause. So that's the most important thing. So people should sign up for that online. Um, we haven't even talked about the fact that you won Chop twice, but I, I'm, you know what? Just no. We don't need. We don't even need to talk about it. We can just leave it right there. <laughs> just leave that right there. That you get. You know, people have the opportunity to cook live with a two-time Chop champion. My my brother's gonna kill me for saying this, but my brother was on Cutthroat Kitchen. Oh really? He didn't make it past the first round, but he had to act like a cat and follow like a laser light. Oh, God. So you'll have to go find my brother's going to, I hope my brother doesn't see this, but it, I love cooking shows. <laughs> that one was fun. So Chopped is super legit though, super legit. And I, I just think it's amazing that people have the opportunity to actually interact with you. Um, and I've gotten an awesome opportunity to interact with you as well. Uh, so here's a fun question. What is your least favorite thing to cook? My least favorite thing to cook? Um, you know, it's tough because I don't, I don't think that there's anything that I hate to cook. Like I said, it's sort of, this sounds like a cop-out answer, but because if, if you want me to cook something for you, regardless of what it is, I'm like, that, that challenge alone is enough to get me excited about the process. But um, my least favorite thing to cook, I would probably say, uh, oh God, you really put me on the spot here, uh, Kelly. You can leave it there. I Let's, think that was such a good answer. <laughs> yeah, I know, and it, it's, and it sounds like a cop-out, but it's really- oh, That's a good answer. It jumps to my mind. It's, you know, like, there are things that I, I'm not familiar with. Like I haven't cooked a lot of, of Asian cuisine, you know, but I don't, I don't, not want to cook it i just don't have the experience in cooking it you know so truly i, I when i say this truly like i uh, cooking is so much about the challenge or the privilege of being able to be of service to other people so i love that you're awesome eli Thank everyone you. needs to go to eli's kitchen and check this place out so give us your uh your elevator pitch at the end here tell us how we can get some food from you um when you open, where are you located? Sure, so Eli's Kitchen is located on, on 40 Market Street in Warren, Rhode Island. We're open four days a week right now, Thursday to Sunday from 4 to 8 p.m. Our menu is available for contactless ordering, and we also have contactless pickup as well. We're not doing delivery currently, but that's on the horizon, uh, but we can, we'll do curbside pickup. And so all the ordering will be done contactless, no cash, through our website, www.eliskitchenwarren.com. Um, we also have a, a really big following on Instagram, so you can check us out on Instagram. Just look up Eli's Kitchen on Instagram, and we also have a Facebook page. Uh, and, all, and so if you're interested in going to eat at the restaurant, you can find us there. If you wanna book me for a private party uh, within, of course, the governor's guidelines and restrictions right now, um, you can do so through www.chefelidunn.com. Uh, you can, there's some info in the book in the booking online booking section of the website where you can um, available for micro catering, small weddings, booking into next year or winter weddings if that's your thing, um, birthday parties, private in-person cooking classes, and then of course the Eli's Kitchen Master Course classes, which are starting in January and will run all the way into the spring. There's going to be three different classes: one that's an Eli's Kitchen Master Class, one that's a brunch master class, and one that's a gluten-free master class. So a little awesome. bit of something for everybody. 
there really is something for everybody. And I really hope everyone reaches out to you and books you and comes to your restaurant. Um, we all need to help each other out right now. Yeah, for sure. I yeah. think um, it might, my, my last little, you know, parting, I don't want to call them words of wisdom because that sounds like, again, I'm patting myself on the back. But Stupid. one of the things I think that I, I like to say about this pandemic is, you know, like we have all been given the permission to color outside the lines a little bit. And, you know, I'm fully aware that there are people suffering and my heart goes out to them, but um, there's always a silver lining. And even though on the surface, it seems as though my business is struggling and it is struggling to a certain extent, um, there's a lot of amazing things that are coming out of this experience for me, for my family, for the restaurant, um, and for other people that I've talked to, you know? So, um, you know, there's in the river of life, you know, we can kind of, get you know we're sort of being carried down the current and we can kind of we can either you know we can either go with the flow or we can try to like claw our way out or walk back against the current try to crawl under the bank or just let the river take us wherever the river is going to take us and and i think with covid this this 2020 year has been a perfect example of you know like what choice do we have but to go with the flow because it's too painful to, to go and get try to go against it so um that's really been my my experience as a business owner and as a human being this year so i hope that everybody out there, um, business owners and, and people alike really just try to find a silver lining because it's not all bad. Wise words, ladies and gentlemen, from Eli Dunn. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> Thank you, Eli.